Representative, and he called to say that he actually was voting and would be over a little bit late. Representative Rosalie Vincent. Um, and, and we're so, so pleased to have Representative Vincent here as our representative, and, and we all know her from represent from being with Kathy Ann Reinstein for many years. So she comes well vetted and ready to ready to make a difference on um, the hill. We have um, Councilman Ira, Ira Novoselsky, who <laughs> is an important leader in the work that the Neighborhood Developers has done in review. Um, uh, Matt Frank, the City Council President from Chelsea, is here. Councilor <laughs> Steve Morvito, who has been uh, involved with us from our very early days in working in um, Revere. And also we have uh, um, School Committee woman Donna Pruitt, Donna Wood Pruitt. <laughs> Forgive me. I, I um, tried to see if I could check everyone. Um, I, and I also want to say two more thank yous. We're going to be talking tonight about planning process that we've been doing with many of you in the room and, and deeply with the city. And, and I actually forgot to mention the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of speaking this evening and so forgive me. Um, so we've been doing we've been doing planning and I want to uh, we've had great support from um, the Metropolitan Area Planning Commission and from planner Catherine Madden and Catherine is um, away out of town this week and couldn't be with us so we were we were going to we had a great 
tease planned for her, but she, she wisely left town instead. <laughs> um, but she did an extraordinary job helping to recognize the vision that you all have for your city. So um, we're, and we're here tonight to celebrate home. The physical buildings we live in, even more the neighborhoods that make up our home. And, and we know that home matters, that where you live is the single greatest det determinant of your health, your educational attainment, your well-being, indeed even your longevity. So home is really, home really matters, and that's where the Neighborhood Developers works. We work on issues of home. And, you know, we're at 50 years, the 50-year anniversary in President Johnson's War on Poverty. Now, most of you are too young to remember it, but that's when I was, when I was a child, we as a nation said, no more poverty. And our progress has not been sufficient. But we have two new tools, or, or two new improvements to our tools that make me hopeful that we are turning a corner. Our work is now clearly guided by the wisdom of residents, informed by deep research, and driven by data. We have the ability to understand what's working and what's not working. So we say that our work, and that of our partners, is evidence-based and data-driven. So we don't just guess about what's working, but we really base it on testing because you all deserve to see solid improvement in your communities. And the second thing is that we're learning to really deepen our partnership, our partnerships with city officials, with other nonprofits, with businesses, and with neighbors and we're doing it in a way of clearly sharing goals and holding each other accountable so we embrace what is now being called collective impact fancy word but it's really about holding each other accountable for working together to make real difference so and and i hope tonight you hear that theme really clearly in Chelsea and Revere, we've just completed a year of planning in each city in partnership with the respective cities, the neighbors, the businesses, the nonprofits, to rec realize the vision that each of the co two communities have to improve key business corridors. So in, in Revere, we worked on the Shirley Ave Corridor, in Chelsea, we worked on the Broadway downtown corridor. What has come out is a plan that is, holds, has responsibility for each one of the stakeholders to implement. It is indeed a new civic compact in our communities that together we don't turn to the city and say make this better. We don't turn to the businesses and say improve it. We all together step up and say we will improve our communities. Together, together we can do this. And so I'm gonna ask Orlando Jacques to come and tell you the story about how this work was done here in, in Revere. And we're going to have an opportunity for every one of the stakeholders to signify their, your strong commitment by actually signing on to the plan. So Orlando, if you, and Orlando is a very special person who is the vice president of the board. So he's one of my bosses, so please be really nice to him. <laughs> and has brought incredible wisdom to his work with, with TND. Orlando.
Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for, um, for taking time out of your day, um, your beautiful spring, although a bit chilly day, to, uh, to come and, 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 and celebrate with the neighborhood developers a year's worth of accomplishment. Um, and, and as we look ahead into the future, into the great work that we have ahead of us. So as Anne noted, um, in her very kind, almost too kind, I think, yeah, too kind words, um, I, I come to you tonight wearing two hats. Um, one as the Vice uh, Chair of the Neighborhood Developers Board of Directors, the work that I, that I cherish immensely, but more importantly, also as one of your neighbors here in Ward 2. Um, I've been a resident in Revere for the past seven years, and um, I've come to learn that Revere is a city unlike many others out there. We have a rare um, set of gifts that, that really set Revere apart uh, from, from our surrounding neighboring communities. We have location at you know, seven to eight miles north of Boston. We have access to the tea, as you just heard. <laughs> we have an incredible melting pot of cultures and ethnicities. Um, you know, one that offers us the ability as residents to partake in tasting new foods every day and learn, hearing and learning different languages and learning about new customs and making new friends, reaching across cultural barriers. Uh, we have an engaged youth that finds it fun to put down their homework and their video games and actually um, get their hands dirty and help out. And we have a city government that actually cares and is working diligently and very hard to make sure that through an economic uh, development plan that Revere can weather um, the next generation um, and, and be a city of choice for, for current residents and for residents to come. And those gifts, I think, also come with a number of challenges um, that, that I think um, um, can help shape how our future um, evolves, specifically here on the Shirley Ave and Ward 2 neighborhood. Those challenges being our deep concern for the cleanliness and the health of our community, um, our concern about inclusion and access to information, access to affordable housing, an equitable housing environment, a strong market for housing, a thriving business community that, that helps residents um, access things that we need, but also provide services to potential uh, visitors and, 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 and tourists alike. Uh, we have challenges that um, surround the uncertainty um, with the development that's ongoing in Revere, not necessarily focused on Shirley Avenue. What's going to happen to Shirley as Revere continues to evolve and grow at the beach, at the casino, potentially uh, on Broadway? So these challenges triggered a group of engaged residents, many of which um, are currently involved in the community and many of which have met at um, Revere Community Committee meetings that are sponsored by the neighborhood developers, many who have met working together on rebuilding Costa Park and have seen the, kind of the transformative effect that that project has had on, on this very neighborhood. But well, we came together and we um, started talking about our concerns and, and how we wanted to see the Shirley Avenue uh, neighborhood and the Ward 2 area evolve into the future. What was our vision and how did that vision line up with the vision of the, uh, of the city government and with the stakeholders that do so much work in Revere? And as Anne noted, instead of us just talking about our concerns, we asked ourselves, well, how can we start working together to put action behind our concerns and to really reach across the lines and start putting our collective resident mindset with the mindset of the city and, and stakeholders to try to together identify solutions to the problem. And that's how the Shirley Ave uh, action planning process began back in the fall of 2012. And you know, it's become, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful and powerful processes that, that I've been able to participate in. We've come together as residents who are working with elected officials across the board, who are working with stakeholders and, and, and nonprofits in the area to identify problems, to identify solutions, come up with ideas, and participate in actually coming up with actions to implement in a measurable amount of time to accomplish our vision. What a powerful concept. 
Um, so the action planning process, again, began formally um, in the beginning of 2013. We've had a series of community meetings where all of these stakeholders and participants came together. We've had hundreds of residents come and share their opinions, their ideas, volunteer to, to actually take on action, to work with our city officials and identify uh, uh, and define a vision that is looking um, at the future, a Shirley Avenue neighborhood that is vibrant, healthy, safe, attractive, um, and that offers affordable and equitable housing um, to, to the current residents. So um, I just wanted to invite Mayor Rizzo, uh, because he's been such a great um, uh, collaborator in this process along with the city, um, as we um, thank the city's participation um, in the process and also um, to allow him to give some perspective about how this process has also um, been important in, in, in kind of meeting the uh, agenda for the city. Um, so, Major, if you, if you come, uh, can come up, and, and we'd appreciate listening to some of your words. And again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much um, for those kind words and for your hard work uh, in moving this project forward. Um, it has really been a pleasure to work with Ann Houston and her board of directors and volunteers. Uh, in various projects uh, across the city, but arguably this uh, Shirley Ave project uh, that they have so aptly undertaken <coughs> um, is one is probably the most exciting for me. You know, as the mayor of the city and somebody that uh, has been here in the community for a long time, I have often said to people, you know, the <coughs> best place the most um, valuable pieces of property, in my mind, should exist on Shirley Ave and in areas adjacent to Shirley Ave. I mean, I can still remember, vaguely, uh, some of you may remember a little bit better than me, the days when Shirley Ave was a thriving business district, when people would go down to Shirley Ave. Uh, I'm sure Councilman Novoselsky, who's here, remembers those old days with Schwartz's Deli and all the various cafes and, and uh, uh, many shoe stores, from what I can recall. Um, and uh, and, and uh, o over time, like a lot of other urban cities, uh, you know, we fell on hard times. And so, um, as I've been able to serve the city in my capacity as a city council and now as mayor, you know, it, it, there's a lot of areas that have required my attention. Um, you know, uh, some people have said I've been focusing maybe too much on Broadway. Um, but it was difficult as one person, or, uh, you know, one administration, to be taking on various areas. The goal for me has always been revitalize our central business district and then take that concept to other areas. TND just forced my hand that much quicker so that we are multitasking now and that we have a real significant action plan to rejuvenate and revitalize Shirley Ave at the same time as we undertake plans up on Broadway. Uh, I know that myself, I attended a couple of the meetings that uh, you had as you were formulating your plan. And um, I have to say, in probably all my years in public life, I have never seen the amount of participation and the amount of people willing to step up and volunteer and offer their input, as I have in this process, I believe over 150 people all told were part of this process. You should all give yourselves a hand for that. <laughs> um, and they've all worked together so that we can make this area, these neighborhoods, a more vibrant, cleaner, safer area. Uh, we've agreed to tackle some big challenges. Um, that will require citizens in the city working together with the Department of Transportation. Um, we've agreed to celebrate the culture and diversity of the community with neighborhood events and activities. And I'm looking forward to the first event that's organized by the new Revere Community Committee. We're going to create a great entranceway 
to Shirley Avenue by the Revere Tea Stop. You can look for a new mural to begin in the next month or so, and eventually a new gateway arch that will lead into the Shirley Ave neighborhood. This is part of uh, the usage of funds through our Community Development Block Grant Program that we've committed to help make this a reality for residents in and around Shirley Avenue. These are all part of what we're calling an action plan. And every action that you'll see on this board, every action item has a champion and a partner. And I think, uh, Ann, you deserve a huge amount of credit and your staff that worked on that because I asked the question when I first saw the plan, what's the difference between a champion and a partner? And, you know, the concept is pretty simple and clear. If you make everybody a champion, nobody knows to take charge of it. So there's going to be one group or one person or one organization or one committee that's going to take charge of that action item, but they're going to have partners with them so they don't have to go it alone. Um, uh, again, a very, um, I think, thorough and accurate way to move forward with um, And as part of that, uh, today, tonight, we are going, I'm going to invite, and I'm sure others will, invite all stakeholders, residents, businesses, nonprofits here in the Shirley Ave area and throughout the city, to join in signing this action plan. And then we'll be able to hold each other accountable because we're all going to sign this, hopefully. And so uh, with that, um, I would like to... Uh, uh, on behalf of the city, <laughs> see how things can start with just one person. <laughs> but I am honored uh, tonight to sign here on behalf of the city to partner with you and the neighborhood developers and all the other stakeholders involved. I am honored here to sign that we are going to see this plan through for a more vibrant, cleaner, safer Shirley Avenue than you've ever seen in any of our lifetimes. And when I get done signing it, Orlando, you're going to be next. You're going to sign it after me, okay? So, uh, Ann, if and you wouldn't I mind. I can here for you. Oh, thank you very much. Now. As soon as we're done with these first formal signatures, we're going to put the sign over here. And I'm expecting all of you who are stakeholders to go up and sign join it? in signing. And the mayor has already asked if he could display this in City Hall to show other neighborhoods what they could also be doing. So um, I'm going to make two, two, thank you, Mayor. That was a I want to say two more quick, I, of course I want to welcome Representative Dan Ryan, who voted <laughs> for um, And I also want to say um, welcome and thank you to Bob Upton from the, from the Revere Chamber. Um, one more thank you before I hand this over to, I believe, Emily Loomis is going to step up and start our awards. I want to thank my staff. The, the is done by an incredibly talented and dedicated group of people at the staff level and at the board level. And I'm going to let um, Charlene Bauer, who's an extraordinary president, tell you about the board when she's up at the, um, for, for our business portion. But really, all of this is the result of hard work from the board and the staff. Thank you. Emily? And now for the 
the award. Hi, I'm Emily Loomis. I'm the director of real estate with the neighborhood developers. I'm very pleased to present this award for leadership in sustainable design to Icon Architecture and their president, Nancy Ludwig. Icon Architecture. In 2013, 32 new families spent their first year living in Highland Terrace in Chelsea. Highland Terrace received LEED Platinum certification for its green and sustainable design, which is the highest award given by the United States Green Building Council. This year, we're under construction on 30 new homes in the Shirley Avenue neighborhood in Revere. With each project we worked on with ICON, they've helped us increase our commitment to building healthy homes that improve the health of, help support the health of residents who live there and contribute to a more sustainable neighborhood and environment. So thank you very much, Nancy Ludwig, Michelle Opinion, and ICON. Uh, my name is Melissa Walsh. I'm the Director of Community Engagement at the Neighborhood Developers. So I'm really excited to be here tonight with you all. You have heard a tremendous amount about the planning process that's been happening here in the Shirley Avenue neighborhood. Well, back in the fall, we embarked on a planning process at the, for the Broadway Corridor in Chelsea. Um, through this process, we've been looking at quality of life, we've been looking at the business district, the infrastructure, and, and housing as well. And the theme of tonight is about partnering. And right from the get-go, we, we partnered with the city, they were a co-sponsor of this planning process, but we couldn't have done this planning process, we're just about at the end now, without the help of the Chelsea Chamber. And that's who we're going to recognize tonight. Um, so the Chamber, from, from the beginning, uh, the Chamber Executive Director, the Chamber President who's here with us tonight, Dennis Cataldo, and members of the Executive Committee have worked hard to, to reach out to businesses, to Chamber members, to la the Latino Division of the Chamber, to engage them in one-on-one -on -one interviews, focus groups, involving them in surveys and community meetings to make sure that the voice of the businesses were represented in this planning process both in terms of the challenges that they might be facing, but also in terms of their vision and their ideas for solutions as to how the Broadway corridor could be different, could be more vibrant, uh, a, a more vibrant business district in Chelsea. So we want to honor the Chamber of Commerce tonight and President Dennis Cataldo for all of their efforts through the planning process and their dedication to make Chelsea and the Broadway corridor a better place. Thank you so much. Director of Connect and Resident Asset Development at the Neighborhood Developers. One of the ways in which the Neighborhood Developers uh, contributes to collective impact is by uh, taking a lead in and continuing to support the organizations that make up Connect. Connect is a collaboration of six organizations that have co-located services from income and housing stabilization all the way through to workforce development and employment services in one place. Part of the story of Connect is embodied in Ana Pereira, who we will be honoring this evening. Um, her story is that 
you need one place where you can go to to find the pathway that you need to gain a foothold in today's financial world and, and move on to a better life. Ana Pereira has taken advantage of every single service that we have at Connect. Starting from, yes, we could do that. <laughs> Starting with ESL, moving on to GED, taking a Bridges to College program um, in the hopes of moving on and getting a nursing credential. She has taken advantage of the individual support that our financial coaches offer, has lowered her expenses, has refinanced her home, and she has taken some, uh, advantage of the support that she gets from her peers um, in our peer support groups, our success teams. And so for her incredible contributions, um, oh, actually, the other thing she's done is volunteered a whole heck of a lot. Um, <laughs> she, uh, she has come to Vida, one of our busiest uh, seasons at Connect, um, our, our three tax preparation, um, called clients, reminded them of their appointments, She's coming back, she's volunteering, and so Anna, I really want to thank you for your commitment to Canada. Sally, Sally Domenico did represent a portion of Revere who was here, and another, you know, another just great, terrific public servant. And uh, I see Dan Ryan here, newly elected. Dan, good to have you here as well. Um, so, so really, I've been very, very fortunate to work with some tremendous public servants. And uh, and the person that I'm going to introduce now, um, really, uh, I don't think calling her a tremendous public servant uh, does her justice. She is as hard a working elected official that, as I have ever had the opportunity to work with. She began as, a, uh, as an elected official uh, on the school committee, moved to the House of Representatives in, uh, I believe, uh, 2010, 2008, went to the State Senate in 2010, and moved to Congress now in 2013. Um, she, this, this project that we're talking about here tonight is right in her wheelhouse. She uh, pays very close attention to housing. She pays very close attention to jobs. She's a staunch advocate for our schools, for veterans, for seniors, for gun safety. And she is just a tremendous representative for our area here uh, in the city of Revere and beyond in the 5th Congressional District. It is my distinct privilege and honor to introduce you to our Congresswoman, Catherine Clark. Oh my goodness, that 
Well, it's nice. <laughs> Talk about nice. Have you ever been in a school with such an exquisite view? Ever? <laughs> this is unbelievable, but it is so revered to build a school that gives its children and its future the best view in the city. Um, that really, it really does say what makes the city so And thank you, Mayor Rizzo uh, and Anne, for having me here and letting me be part of this incredible occasion and celebration and being so welcoming to this city of Revere. And to my, my partners in the state delegation who are here, uh, just delighted to be part of uh, a newcomer to the city. I'm a newcomer to Congress. I've only been there a couple of months. And a uh, few of you have heard me tell this story, but um, when you come into Congress, you get these fancy pins. And for those of you who watch House of Cards, I know you're out there. Uh, <laughs> it is more than just from the House of Cards. These are real. And uh, you get a number on the back that is tied to your seniority in Congress. So I'm brand new, and I knew there were a couple of other special elections going on. So I thought there are 435 members of the House of Representatives. So my number will be somewhere around 433. I thought that's where it be. So I get my number. It's 474. <laughs> How is that even possible? You know, do they retire great numbers? You know, when a great member of Congress resigns or leaves, I'm not sure. But. Uh, but what I have, I may be the most junior member of the minority party, but I get to go to Washington every week, and I get to represent communities like Revere, and I get to represent the work the Neighborhood Developers is doing. And what you're doing with the work you've done in Chelsea, the work you're now about to undertake on Shirley Avenue, the playground that you built with what, over 200 volunteers in Costa Park, uh, the mural that you're going to be putting up soon, these are all so important to building the community and reflecting back what this community is and what its future is going to be. And the people who have won awards here tonight, whether you're a volunteer from the community, a business partner, you know, it all it's all the same thing. And as I was looking at it, the work that I'm trying to do in Congress is exactly what you're doing here. And it is such a privilege to be able to represent uh, Revere in Congress as we, as we look at it. And it's, you know, as Ann said, it's about building a home. And it starts with building that social fabric. And when we look at building a home, it's more than just the physical house, but it's the work you did in Revere that when you take abandoned homes, abandoned buildings that are vacant, and you turn them into places where people that can live, that are also environmentally um, sound and good for us, as we know on a coastal community, how much that means to us going forward. And it's about building that social fabric. That's where we start. And it may start with a physical home, but it also moves on to work that I'm trying to do in Congress and remembering that we are there to help represent some of the most vulnerable. And when I heard one of my colleagues talking about the food program, one of our ultimate safety nets that we feed children and families in this country who are hungry. And when we decided in the House of Representatives to balance our budget on the backs of hungry children, and Paul Ryan stood up at a national conference and said, well, the Democrats may want to feed hungry kids, but they're not going to have a soul. The only person who should be worried about their soul is people who would undertake cutting that kind of social safety net while we continue to give out corporate handouts and bailouts. Uh, the other great thing I loved uh, reading about you is economic opportunity. I talk a lot about building an economy that is open to everyone. And what does that mean? I think everyone in this room understands what it means. It means that we keep creating opportunity 
no matter what your family's income, no matter what zip code you come from. It starts here in our schools, it starts with our youngest learners, and making sure that those kids are great readers by third grade. Because we know if they're great readers by third grade, that's the year everything changes, from learning how to read to using reading to learn. And we can do that. The work that is going on here in Revere's in the schools is incredible. And the work that they are working on on a regional basis now to support our children as they may move from community to community is exactly that type of social fabric and community building that we're here celebrating tonight. It also means that we work for a minimum wage so that people in this country, in this state, in this city who are working full time are able to afford a decent life. It doesn't mean getting wealthy. We know there aren't going to be equal outcomes. It's about opportunity. And is it about when you work hard, you get to provide for your family and yourself and create a decent life. It is also about making sure that we pay equally. In 2014, a woman should not be still making 70 cents on a dollar when she does the same job that a man does. And if you Those numbers are even more stark. That when we talk about equality and building an economy that is fair, it is one of our basic fundamentals. And that's why I was proud to have one of the first bills I signed on to, to be the Paycheck Fairness Act. It is stalled out in Congress, and I need your help in pushing and putting pressure on those in DC who don't understand the fundamental fairness of this. And another part of keeping that dream alive is we have to make sure that everybody can access a college education. And that when kids are coming out of college, they are not so saddled with debt that they can't, they can't move on with their lives. That is part of what we can do better in this country. And we have to put those pieces together. And then finally, what I loved about the message tonight is let's do this in an environmentally aware way. We have to address climate change. We have to make sure that we are being very realistic about those policies. It is something that the mayor was down in DC talking about, talking about infrastructure, talking about how we address it, talking about how we deal with it. And just today, I was literally a, you know, across the water here at Northeastern's Marine Biology. And they are looking at Urban, urban coastal sustainability. That's going to affect Revere. That's what, when we make an investment in Congress in research and development and clean technology and medical research, that's what's going to make a difference on climate change. That's what's going to make a difference for families' lives. That's what's going to continue to create jobs and opportunity. Investment has become a bad word in Congress, and we have to start standing up and saying, this is what it means. This is how we build communities. This is how we keep the American dream alive. I am so proud here tonight um, for all the work you're doing, and also to be here with my mom. And, uh, <laughs> and I think it's very appropriate that she's here because um, she was my town librarian and my school librarian growing up. And she really understood that when we develop those public spaces that support community, when we support literacy, when we open up and make sure that we are investing in our people, that that investment just pays back dividends to all of us. Whether that's our business community, whether that's our schools, it's also interconnected. Uh, there was a great quote from uh, the mayor down in Braintree who, said, who put it pretty simply yesterday in the Globe. We cannot do it alone. And as I move through the halls of Congress, I am looking for those partners. And I don't care. Uh, I'm a staunch Democrat, but if they're Republicans and we can move the issues forward, let's work together. We don't have to agree on everything to start working together. <laughs> So I feel 
so honored and uh, privileged to be part of this. I think this is an incredible model, like anything with action items. <laughs> and uh, I am just, uh, I am thrilled to be here. I hope you will uh, be in contact with my office. We're in Revere uh, twice a month. I want to introduce from my staff, uh, Anthony Moreshi. I don't know where he went, right there. Uh, Anthony, uh, Anthony requested that he get Revere after coming over here. Uh, he grew up in Malden, uh, and um, he really he does a wonderful job. We want to hear from you. We want to know how we can support this project and everything that you're doing. We have so many issues on the national level, but it starts right here in our communities and with you. So I'm so grateful for the work you're doing. I'm going to be proud to watch you put your signatures on here. Oh, I'll be glad to sign it. I did too many work. <laughs> but I'm glad to sign it and glad to support it going forward. Thank you for having me here tonight. I'm going to bring up Charlie Bauer, who is the president of the Neighborhood Developers Board of Directors and an extraordinary leader. So I have the uh, privilege of doing the business side of the meeting uh, tonight, but before I do that, I just want to thank everyone for coming out. Um, the Neighborhood Developers is near and dear to my heart. The work that is accomplished is amazing. And I've never seen um, a better run um, organization that produces the results for residents in creating healthy neighborhoods. And it's all because of the great leader we have in Ann Houston. So first I'd like to um, thank Ann for all the work and dedication and leadership that she provides, provides to the organization. Additionally, we have an amazing board of directors that just give up their time. We sit on committees come to board meetings, and this is all volunteer work, and it's without the guidance and expertise of the board um, that the organization wouldn't be where it is today. So I also want to recognize all of the board of directors, so if you can just raise your hand, and I just want to thank you for everything you do. It's amazing work. Thank you. And lastly, lastly, I want to echo what Ann said about the staff. The Neighborhood Developer staff is an amazing group of talented individuals that work tirelessly weekends, nights, days, and they come up with great ideas. They're always testing themselves. They're not satisfied with the today. They're looking on how we can improve and make neighborhoods better. And for that, I thank you, and I thank you for the dedication to the Neighborhood Developers. So thank you, everyone. open board positions and I would like to um, um, present a slate of nominations for board members. Um, Alberto Calvo, who I believe is in the room. Alberto, thank you. Uh, Kristen Bernard, Kristen, Orlando, you met earlier. Uh, Tech Lang, and Suwaka Kuma Perez. Uh, are there any other nominations on the floor? Okay, may I have a motion to accept the nominations as presented? So okay, so moved. All in favor? Aye. Okay, Aye. congratulations to everyone. <laughs> now, if you're one of the Revere stakeholders, please make your way over to add your signature. If you're a Chelsea stakeholder, just watch because <laughs> next month you're going to get this, a chance to sign on to the Chelsea plan. So thank you all. It, let's have some more music and, and enjoy the food from each other. Thank you.